Well, hey there, everyone. It's Rob Ryder on Memorial Day 2024, which would be the 27th of May 2024. And today I want to talk about the fact that the American Legion is the United States. And not just the American Legion, there's any number of patriotic and uh, national associations that have been created under a federal charter. And so they're a federal corporation. And all federal corporations are the United States. But they don't all have the same powers. It's all written into their charter or into their bylaws and so forth and so on. And when you stop and look at it and say, well, these people have got some real power. We shouldn't have the problems we have in the United States today. But the reason that we do is because in all cases, there's like one thing they have to do before they can have these powers, such as the American Legion. They have to register a registered agent with the Secretary of State. The name and address of a registered agent that service a process and demands of the corporation can be served on. And it hasn't been done. As soon as it's done, then they are in the United States. Until it's done, then there is useless tits on a board. And that's where we're at today. It's a good place to get a cheap drink, but they can't do nothing for nobody. Because they haven't filed their own frickin' federal charter. And so I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just pointing out the fact, right? Dude, you want to fix it, just go, you know, do what the, your charter says. And that's what I'm trying to get done. I'm hoping that uh, maybe uh, when this is over, I'm going to have a little something written into the uh, comment section that you can copy and paste and put into an email to send to the American Legion. And uh, if a bunch of veterans do it, maybe somebody will pay attention. We can get this thing fixed. Maybe you know a national member or a national, uh, excuse me, a constitutional officer or some higher up in the hierarchy. You know, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, but I am Staff Sergeant Waluski Robert Allen because I never got discharge order, so I'm always on duty. And as is every other enlistee, you've never gotten a discharge order, my friends. We're still in. Now, if you were medically discharged, it may be different. But if you weren't medically discharged from the armed forces of the United States, well, then you're still a member. So find your DOD ID number. Mine is 12-112-80006. And again, I'm also known as Rob Ryder. And my email address is Rob Ryder. R-O-B-B-R-Y-D-E-R at AOL.com. Uh, so, again, if you know something or get something or hear something on this, please let me know because I I really want to push this until the American Legion is the United States, period, which means they have to register with the Secretary of States of the various states. If we can get that done, it would be a big day in America. Or actually, I should say, in the United States. So hang on, let me show you where all this comes from. So in Title 36, the United States Code, it's uh, Patriotic and National Observances, Ceremonies, and Organizations. And you got these three subtitles, and uh, the one we're talking about is Subtitle 2, Patriotic and National Organizations. So as an example, one of those is uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, the United States. Right uh, under 112 statutes at large, 14881. Right, so this is statute at large. This is a law of the United States, federal charter. Veterans of foreign wars, the United States, a national association of men who are as soldiers, sailors, and marines. Every man served in nations and wars, campaigns, expeditions on foreign soil and hostile waters is a federally chartered corporation. So again, it's not just the American Legion. I'm just going to use them because I had their information up first. But in this uh, law are any number of them. So hang on, let me just get uh, patriotic national organizations. Which, uh, obviously, they're not all military. you got Agriculture Hall of Fame, for God's sakes. But here's the American Legion. Well, they're in there. American Vets is in there. American War Mothers. Blue Star Mothers of America. Boy Scouts of America. 
all of these different entities are uh, federally chartered corporations, and therefore they are the United, the United States as long as they follow their charter. Now, they don't all have the same powers and duties, right? So that has something to do with it, but it's all what it is. And so again, if you go down and look at uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, What's his purpose? Uh, to preserve and strengthen camaraderie among members, to assist worthy comrades, perpetuate memory, maintain true allegiance to the government of the United States, foster true patriotism, maintain and extend institutions of American freedom, and preserve and defend the United States from all enemies. That's their purpose, is to preserve and defend the United States from all enemies. Well, the problem is the United States... Now, we're talking a territorial sense. The United States have been invaded by esquires. Esquires are crown agents. By definition, an esquire is an agent of the crown. And they've taken over the legal system, and they've taken over the political system, and they've done all sorts of shit. They're enemies of the United States. They may be members of the United States of America, which is that thing called the democracy, but it's not the same as the Union of the United States. Um, but continuing on, so what kind of powers they have? Well, they can adopt and amend constitution, uh, get a corporate seal, make contracts, acquire property, you know, just standard stuff corporations can do. Sue and be sued. And then finally, do any other act necessary and proper to carry out the purposes of the corporation. Such as, we'll call on the military to say, hey, we got a problem here in this county because none of the officers here have taken a proper oath of office. Now, I covered that in quite a lot of detail in my last video, entitled, uh, General Flynn Used the UCMJ to End Lawfare. Well, I'm saying that the American Legion can use the UCMJ to end lawfare. Also, it just has to first do what it needs to do to um, be properly registered. So just, just real quick, back to the VFW then, right? Uh, exclusive right to the name. So who are we talking about? Well, the corporation has the exclusive right to the use of the name Veterans of the Foreign Wars of the United States. That's the name of the corporation. That's what has to be registered with the state and have a registered agent with a name and a freaking address. Right? Under service of process. This is what they catch ever. All of the entities are being caught on this one little thing right here. Service of process. As a condition to the exercise of any power or privilege granted by this chapter, the corporation shall file with the Secretary of State or other designated official of each state the name and address of an agent in that state on whom legal process or demands against the corporation may be served. Such a simple thing to do. Just, you know, register your corporation with the state the way every other corporation is supposed to be registered. But it hasn't happened. So let's look at the American Legion now. I mean, if you go to the American Legion website and uh, search enough, you'll find where they talk about their charter. And uh, when you click on it, this is what you download. This is their charter, right? It's a federal charter. The American Legion, in this chapter, the corporation is a federally chartered corporation. Nothing else needs to be said. What's its purpose? To uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Check the box. Who's the members? What's the powers? Well, look at that. Do any other act necessary or proper to carry out the purpose of the corporation. What, they can do whatever they need to do to protect and defend, or actually, in their case, it says uphold. You should be correct, right? Uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Well, I showed in my video with the President, uh, to, President Flynn, to General Flynn that, uh, you know, the Constitution that Congress uses isn't the same as the Constitution that the military uses. That's in the uh, uh, Manual for Court Martials, which says at the top, the one the Manual for Court Martials says, "This is the Constitution of the United States." The one that Congress uses says, "This is the Constitution of the United States of America." Right? Constitu the United States of America is not the same as the United States. And then you read into these constitutions, and you get to Article Two, where it talks about who has the executive power, 
the one in the uh, uh, Manual of Court Marshals, the Constitution of the United States, says that the executive power resides in the President of the United States. And you look at the one Congress uses, it says that the executive power resides in the President of the United States of America. They're just, you know, it, it's obviously wrong. How come we're not doing something about it? And again, just, uh, you know, all these charters are written similarly. They don't, they're not all the same, but they're similar. So you got an exclusive right to a name. So in this case, it's the American Legion or American Le Legion, right? Either of those can only be used by the American Legion. And serve as a process. A corporation shall file with Secretary of State or other designated official of each state the name and address of an agent in that state on whom legal process or demands against the corporation may be served. Well, it's not happening. And I'm going to show you right now. So, you know, probably in every state, but it's always... You know, not very smart to say every. So in most states, let's say you can go and you can say like whatever the name of your state is, in my case, Michigan, uh, business entity registration or business entity search or something. And you'll find uh, the site that goes to it. So in Florida, it's called sunbiz.org, right? Divisional corporations. And we can see right here at the very beginning, if you were, to, I had done a search on the American Legion. And sure enough, I get two hits. They both say they're active. Say, well, you're wrong, Rutluski. There it is. It's right there. Well, before we go to look at what they can say, what, what we should say then is, well, all the rest of these then are not what we're talking about because they're not using the name that's in the charter. It may be buried in the name of the entity someplace, but it's not the name used in the charter. Now, let's look at what these have to say, the American Legion. That's the first one. Well, we can stop right now. It's, this says it's a rejected filing. So it's there, makes it look like it's there, but the th damn thing has been rejected. And then there's no other documents that go with it. Right? It's like this was put in and that's as far as I ever got. Well, this is not a registration that doesn't list the name of the registered agent. All right? So then we had this other one. Well, how about, how about number two? They, you know, they fixed it. No, it's as... Screwed up is the other one. There, there's no information on these. To show you what I mean, though, we'll just, you know, pick any of these other ones real quick. How about this one? See, they should be registered agent. Now, I don't care if this one has one or not, because this is not the American Legion or American Legion. But I'm showing you that there's more to these pages than what we're seeing when we look at the American Legion. Right? This is where there should be a principal address, there should be a registered agent, all this information should be filled out, and it's not. So they've not been registered properly. And here's my state, right? The American Legion. Well, they were registered at one time. There's their identification number, date of incorporation back in 1920, date of dissolved, 1981. So for some reason, 1981, this was dissolved, even though I had perpetual corporate uh, per, a perpetual um, existence. It was dissolved, and so this name here, this writer's days, this is somebody from way back in 1981, right? It's left this way to confuse you or to make you think that this is part of the scheme that's being used by esquires who have taken over everything in the fucking law system so they can do law war or lawfare. In what should be, you know, the civilian courts. My point is, as uh, the United States, we don't need to use the civilian courts. We can go to the military courts about the shit that's happening in these other places. And then just one more real quick. This is uh, Indiana, where... Uh, is the headquarters of the American Legion. So you say, well, they're certainly they're going to be here. And 
And there's pages and pages of things that had the American Legion as part of the name, right? But none of them are just the American Legion, so we're not talking about these. But there was... So let's find the page where they start with the T, because there's no American Legion up there. And then the, right? It should be the American Legion. Full stop. Not Adam's Post number, whatever. Right? These, these are not what we're talking about. It's... Not even the American Legion, Inc. None of those are the proper name of the American Legion. It's in your charter. It says what, who you are and what you're supposed to call yourself. Now, if uh, you're somebody who's followed my videos for any time, then you're the kind of person that would already know that it's often said that Title 28, United States Code, 3002, subsection 15, right? So 28 U.S.C. 3002, subsection 15, says that the United States is a corporation. People will tell you that till they're blue in the face, and they'll say that the proof is that it's the, uh, uh, the Washington, D.C. Act of 19, or, uh, 1871 or something like that, the D.C. Act of 1871, that that made the United States a corporation, and they go on and on and on and on and on. The problem is that isn't what this says. All right, let's go down and look at it. All right, United States means a federal corporation, an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity in the United States, or an instrumentality of the United States. They just forget, like these other ones were even here, and they say, well, they, that the United States is a corporation. See, it's right there. No, the United States is all of these. In fact, if you click on any one of these United States, it'll take you to this. What does United States mean? It's a federal corporation, an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States, or an instrumentality of the United States. So a federal corporation is as much the United States as uh, the Department of Defense is, or the Department of the Army, or the Department of State, or any other department, or commission, or board, or any other entity, agency, Right, the FBI, whatever it is, the um, Justice Department. If the American Legion or any other Patriot Association was properly registered, they'd have all the same authority as all them other people, and that would be who you would be dealing with. You wouldn't be dealing with, you know, Joe Blow on the street. You would be taking your business or your complaint or whatever against places other than yourself that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So again, there are no officers that have taken a proper oath to office. All right, Article 6 of the Constitution, Debt, Supremacy, Oaths, Religious Test. Senators, representatives before mentioned, the members of several state legislatures, all ALL executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. But no religious test shall be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Well, now when Congress takes an oath, they say, so help me God. So that oath isn't the one we're talking about. And so... None of these people, senators, representatives, your state legislators, the governor, the secretary of state, the attorney general, judges, justices, sheriffs, any constitutional officer under your state constitution. Let's just say that. If it's in your constitution of a state that that office exists, then they have to take an oath to satisfy the sixth article. And that oath was... Uh, ratified and signed by George Washington, June 1st, 1789, an act to regulate time and manner of administering certain oaths, where it said that the oath or affirmation required by the sixth article of the Constitution of the United States, which we just were looking at, shall be administered in the form following. In other words, it's got to look like this. I, put your name in, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Period. Even the period is in the quotes. You gotta have the, you gotta stop. It's done. That's the oath. That oath satisfies six article of the Constitution. Anything else somebody wants to do for an oath is up to them. But that's what you need to do to satisfy the sixth article. And if you ain't done it, 
and you are not an officer of the United States. Judge, justice, governor, uh, state legislator, doesn't matter. None of them are. None of the fucktards you see today have done this. They're all in the democracy, United States of America. What we're talking about here is what it takes to be in the republic. And none of them have done it. Well, to show you that that carried on, right now we're in Title IV of the United States Code, which is about the states. And in Section 101, it says that every member of the state legislature, executive judicial officer of a state, shall, before he proceeds, execute duties of his office, take the same oath. And now this says before, right? Both of them said before. So until you do this, you aren't an officer. And if you're acting like an officer without having done this, then you've usurped the power of the office, and now you're an enemy of the United States. It's really that simple. One other thing before I move away from this definition, right? Uh, well, how do you tell who these people are? Who? What are all of these? What do they all have in common? What's their symbol? What's their standard? What? 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 Well, what it is is they all have a gold fringe flag displayed indoors, which can only be displayed by entities that are um, under the authority of the military. The gold fringe flag is covered by an Army regulation, regulation 840-840-10. It says in there where it can be displayed indoors. It can be displayed all sorts of places outside and parades and stuff, but if you're going to display it indoors, like in an office or something, well, that's a symbol that, that is under the jurisdiction of the military. Every courtroom has got a freaking gold fringe flag. Now, I say that, I've, and since I've said that, Places have actually moved the gold fringe flag out of their office, but it's still there. It just isn't in the courtroom necessarily. But one place it is, is the Supreme Court. They got two big ass gold fringe flags flying there. All that stuff is under the military. All that stuff is under the United States, and it's under the American Legion to make sure that it's being uh, run properly. And back to the sixth article, real quick, is, it's, you know, we got two super powerful parts for us. The other one is that the Constitution and the laws of the United States, like 1 Stat 23 that said about the oath, right, that's the law of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, like the Geneva Conventions, shall be the supreme law of the land, and judges in every state shall be bound thereby, and anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. So, as an example, this, the um, Geneva Convention requires all members of the military to carry military ID, or be issued military ID. And so, if you've ever served and you don't have a discharge order, you're still in the military. But most of us, you know, unless you're on active duty or active reserves, don't have one. But that isn't what the law says. We're supposed to have a military ID. Because we've not been discharged from the military. In Title 10 of the United States Code under Armed Forces, in Section 506, it says that an enlistment in the regular Army, Navy, regular Air Force, regular Marine Corps, regular, 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 in effect at the beginning of a war or entered into during a war, unless sooner terminated by the president, continues in effect until six months after termination of that war. Well, how does that affect somebody? Well, in my case, I enlisted during the Cold War, which is a war. It was like 25, 30 years wrong. And then after that was, uh, during that time, it was like the war on drugs came in and uh, the war on terror and the number of different wars, the uh, Persian Gulf War. So while I served, and I was covered by this because of the Cold War, other wars started, which carried me over till today. So I've never been discharged because the president's never discharged me. And not just me. Any, This is for all ALL, all enlisted folks, right? We're still in the military. Technically, you're still getting paid. You know, it's going somewhere. Somebody's taking advantage of it. It ain't going to you, but somebody's taking advantage of the fact that we're still in and we don't know it. And it's the same with our VA 
benefit. So somebody's taking advantage of them because, you know, if you ever dealt with the VA, it's nothing but a pain in the ass. Well, if the, if the American Legion was set up the way it should be set up, we wouldn't have these problems. But it hasn't because it hasn't done the one thing it needs to do, which is tell the Secretary of State who your registered agent is. And uh, this is how you would end the law, the lawfare. I believe that's what they call it, lawfare, right? That's what they're doing against Trump, lawfare. Well, let me show you what it is. Here's an example of lawfare against Stephen K. Bannon, right? Who's his accuser? It's the United States of America. It doesn't say the United States. It says the United States of America. Now, here's a number of other examples. These are people that were veterans or in the military and uh, have been uh, indicted under uh, for what happened on January 6th, right? And their accusers, United States of America. United States of America. United States of America. Well, here's the thing about being in the military, right? You're not supposed to be able to be uh, accused by an indictment. It has to be charges and specifications under the UCMJ, even if you're a veteran, because we haven't been released. We're still under the UCMJ, and yet they're taking these people, and they're uh, trying them in a United States court, being tried by United States of America or accused by United States of America. Well, who the hell is that? Is that an instrumentality? You know, I, I don't know. They got a federal charter. Who are they? What, what I know is it's not the United States. So this is the kind of thing you would bring up to the military. And say, hey, what's going on in this court? These brothers here, these are all veterans. They're all in the military still. Why are they being indicted? They should have been taken to the post and uh, charges and specifications filed. Well, none of that's happening because there is no United States, or it's been vacated. The United States is there, but it's vacated because all the people who could be the United States haven't done their damn charters right. So what can we do about it? Well, here's my suggestion to start with, because it's Memorial Day. Take a minute. All right, go find the American Legion website, and you'll see this contact page. And you can click on it. And you got this contact directly. Oh, these different places you could contact. And one of them is national security. You can send them an email. All right, so I'm asking that you send them an email about the fact that they haven't registered their registered agent with the state. Now, you know, I'm going to make it easy for you because I've already done it, right? So you could send them something like this. Uh, dear American Legion, nothing could be more important to the United States than the American Legion's compliance with this federal charter, that the corporation shall file with the Secretary of State or other designated official of each state the name and address of an agent in that state on whom legal process or demands against the corporation may be served. Sir or ma'am, according to United States Code 28 U.S.C. 3215, the United States means a federal corporation. Congress mandated the American Legion, a federal corporation, the power to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States as the United States, but requires the constitutional officers of the American Legion's first to execute their duties to formally designate a corp the corporation's registered agent. For God and country, please do. So I'm going to copy and paste that, and I'm going to put it over to the side on the you know description of the video and stuff, and if you would, please just copy and paste it if you don't want to come up with your own words uh, and send it to national security. But, you know, if you know these people that are running the show in any form or fashion, then, uh, you know, make a phone call. And as I said, I'm, I'm only picking the American Legion because, uh, you know, I was at one time a member. I have the information and uh, I saw it. But there's all sorts of places that this could be done with other than the American Legion. And they're all listed in uh, Title 36, the United States Code.
So if you do a search on Title 36 United States Code, you'll find something like this right here. Uh, GovInfo.gov, Patriotic National Observances. Click on it. Uh, in this case, it's uh, like a text version. But there they are, right? Patri patriotic and National Organizations. There's American Legion. They're all listed in here. They go on and on. Each, and each of these then has their own federal charter. And each federal charter has its own unique wording. Uh, for instance, there was one here. In fact, let me look at this one. Let me go find it. Hang on. Here's an example, right? Uh, Non-Commissioned Officers Association, United States of America, Incorporated. Now, they do exist. They're fairly close. Non-Commissioned Officers Association, United States of America. It doesn't say incorporated. And the, I mean, this T should be capitalized. You know, so this really isn't the proper style and name compared to what the charter says, but uh, this is, you know, this is what Esquires do. They put all these little defects in the jots and tittles, and uh, we know that the devil's in the details, and if they mess that up, then it's messed up. But nevertheless, here it is. So if this association would do the right thing, then they could do it. And my point is, uh, you know, eight years as an enlisted man, I really never needed an officer except his signature. But in this case, then we wouldn't even need their signature. We have our own group. So in their case, it says, uh, you know, they got a federal charter. There it is. Uh, expiration is, uh, what's the purpose? The purpose uh, is provided in the bylaws and articles and include upholding and defending the Constitution of the United States. Well, there you go. Who can be a member? What's the governing body? What's the powers to do that? Well, the powers, then, of the corporation. Provided in its bylaws and articles of incorporation filed in each state in which it is incorporated. So it has whatever powers it tells the state it has. Right? But they had to file the freaking paperwork, and it hasn't happened. And I think in this case, this says you got to do the articles of incorporation also. So... Your bylaws and articles of incorporation, certain things need to be filed with the state to make it all honky-dory and complete, and it hasn't been done yet. What's the exclusive right to the name? Well, this is how you know if they're using the right name, right? So here we go. you got the Non-Commissioned Officers Association of the United States of America. Okay, I think that's what they were using, so they're fine. Non-Commissioned Officers Association of the United States of America. Oh, I just read that. Is that oh, that. One had the, the other one doesn't. You got non-commissioned officer association, that's okay. And NCOA, that's good. All those, as long as you're using one of those, well, that's the place we're talking about. That's what needs to be registered. If it's registered, it has whatever powers it gives itself, and it tells the state that it has. And to have that stuff, uh, well, what do you got to do? The corporation shall comply with law on service of process of each state in which it's incorporated and each state in which it carries on activities. So, right, just do the paperwork, man. Don't be like an Esquire, leave blanks on paper. You got to fill out every blank. Everything's got to be filled out. Put an NA, none, put a line through it. You know, don't play the fucking half-assed uh, administration game because that's what they're doing. Piss-poor administration has ended up with, you know, screwed up records, but the record is what the record is, and so that's what the record is being used, and it's not being used to our advantage because it doesn't say what it needs to say to be for our advantage. But we can change that. So, yes, the American Legion is the United States. Don't let nobody tell you different. It is. Just as soon as they get registered. We need to get the American Legion or any of these other patriotic associations registered. So, if you have an idea, can get them to do it, you talk to somebody, get more information, please let me know. Right? Email me at robrideraol.com and tell me what you found out. be wonderful. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I uh, have a somber yet happy Memorial Day. And, uh, you know, let's save the United States from the democracy.
by using the UCMJ as the United States. It can be done.